A passport is a pretty straightforward document. And depending on what information pops up on screen when it's scanned, it allows you to travel in and out of various countries. But as the coronavirus pandemic continues, there's discussion surrounding a different kind of document. It's being coined an immunity passport. In parts of Europe, immunity passports are being considered for people who are believed to be immune to the coronavirus. While in China, some cities have already implemented QR codes that generate a color in order for officials to enable how freely an individual may move around outdoors. In Canada, some government officials are considering a contact tracing app. However, the World Health Organization wrote, there's not enough evidence to prove someone who has recovered from COVID-19 is protected from a second infection. In fact, the WHO says immunity passports or risk-free certificates could actually lead to a continued transmission of the coronavirus. But that's not the only concern. What you have here ultimately is a proposal to use technology to divide society between the haves and the have-nots. But what's happening is it's actually gonna layer on top of economics because if it's your past to get back out into the world to be able to work, you're again gonna be relying on you know, privileging people of a certain socioeconomic status against others who will be disadvantaged if they can't get back out into the workplace. Bayless says, Racialized communities are just one of the vulnerable populations which would be hit hard by these passports. You're going to have to police it, right? You're going to have to go around and have somebody ask, you know, do you have this, you know, immunity card? Are you allowed to be in these places, etc.? And I genuinely worry about how that can play out in a context where we already have, um, you know, evidence of uh, discrimination. How is this not going to just add to that problem? It's one more reason to stop and frisk somebody. Another worry of Bayless includes the long-term effects this could have on individuals who want to apply for things like health or life insurance policies. Will this be now important in terms of when I ask for a life insurance policy, a health insurance policy, uh, a particular kind of job where they decide that this is now going to be your ticket to being even eligible to be possibly employed in a particular area? So I think one of the things that happens is once you start codifying information about people, you need to think about who might be asking for this and why might they be asking for this and how might they be using this? Immunity passports really put the focus on the individual, right? It's like, okay, this one person is safe to go out, they can go out and, and that will help, you know, that will help kind of keep the economy going. And what that can distract from is really the collective measures that we need to be taking as a society to protect everyone. And not only would these passports focus on the individual, there's also privacy concerns. I see sort of two um, levels of security issue. One is this idea of sort of either borrowing or stealing other people's certification. Um, either by it being willfully given by, say, a family member or through some sort of emergence of an illegal market for forged certification. Second sort of level of concern around security and privacy is that whenever we have an issue where people are either carrying some sort of validation on an app on their phone or electronic health uh, records on their phone, this obviously creates um, vulnerability to security breaches and breaches of privacy for individuals. However, there are some experts who think a digital immunity passport may be beneficial. We've created a, a, a pan-Canadian app called Can Immunize, which is a digital immunization application. And we've been working with Canada Health Infoway on thinking through this, recognizing there are important ethical, legal, and scientific considerations. Dr. Wilson agrees there's still a lot of unknowns about the coronavirus including the level of immunity someone may have after getting COVID-19, or even how long that immunity may last. But he believes that shouldn't stop people from finding a partial solution to our current situation. The solution I'm advocating would not be limited to a specific application. I would argue that we need a pan-Canadian approach to issuing proof of immunity, both for immunization and for natural immunity where there is a national standard and that it's not exclusive to any particular solution, 
it's provided by governments and can be easily used by citizens so that they can be granted access to places which are gated based on proof of immunity. So then how would a digital immunity passport in Canada work? So, so there are you know, real ethical considerations, but applica a narrow application for settings like frontline workers or early return to work scenarios could be really valuable in controlling the outbreaks or preventing outbreaks as well as ensuring the economy functions. As of now, the World Health Organization says that any possible vaccines are still under investigation. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay up to date on the latest breaking national and international news, be sure to subscribe to our channel where we also dig into big issues around the world in our weekly series, Global News Explains.